All right, today is the day. We are back and the virus has not gotten me down, even though it's been two weeks since I put up a video. But we are here to see what's been going on in that time. Lots of things going on in the world, of course, but we have had some time here in the studio to get some work done. So we're going to take you through that. As you can see, we're starting to get the tub built, at least the bottom side, still in the mold to hold everything rigid in place. We're going to take you through and show you what we've been doing to get this done and show you a little glimpse of some things coming up. So let's go see what's been up. I have to put a few layers on the engine cover and build up the flanges so that I can separate these mold pieces. So I've got a few layers on and now I'm working up according to the flange. Just taking some excess fabric here using big full sheets to try to cover as much as I can without seams on this first few layers. But just marking that off with a marker, trimming it off so I don't have too much excess hanging over that flange. But anyway, the purpose here is to get the flanges built up where these two molds meet so that I can separate these molds and start installing the bulkheads permanently. Like I said, I need a good three, four layers against that flange to keep it strong enough to work against when I actually do the finishing to it. But here it is finished. And then I've gone and scuffed up everything so that the layers that go on now will have good surface to bond against and there won't be anything protruding to mess up the fiberglass. So the bulkhead is temporarily in place. I am checking it now for being nice and square, straight up and down. And this string has, uh, is right at the wheel center line, so measuring that because this is critical for the subframe to bolt to the bulkhead. Make sure my output on my drive shafts are centered. And once I got everything where I want it, it's going to use some expanding insulation foam to bond it in place, fills the gaps, and of course, if there's no gap, just put some foam against it to hold it in place. I'll put foam on both sides and then cut it away to have a nice flat surface to do my lamination against. Once the foam is set, things are good. I'm going to start stripping down the flashings off that mold and pull them apart, get it out of the way so I can get access into that bulkhead and work in there. Flashings come off and now I'm just taking the bolts that are holding those joints together. Of course, not showing. There's some bolts that run all the way underneath the bottom of it. I tipped it up a little earlier and did that. And as I try to pull it apart, I realize that there are a couple of places where my laminations for my flashing have gone up across the top of that little metal flashing and bonded together. Cut those apart. Of course, now it's fallen apart. The only thing holding now is uh, where the hinges are going to go. They kind of click in there and lock in position. But we have the separation move these things apart, give me some room to work in there against that bulkhead. And of course there's some flashing in there, might as well pull that out of the way. Looks like I've got a good amount of releasing agent. Now the front bulkhead, you didn't see that installed, but here I'm just checking to make sure everything's gonna be level. Got a laser set up in the shop and I'm right on level there. So now that I have the front and the rear bulkheads installed, I'm going to start cutting out the floor pieces. Now this floor, I've laid out the design of it in AutoCAD. And so I printed those off and laid them onto the boards to get my size and shape. Now, just like you saw in the previous video in creating the bulkhead out of that foam, cutting out the floor panels. Found out that this craft paper that's on this foam has got a lot of fiberglass in it and uh, even way worse than working with the fiberglass cloth is working with this board. Really gets a lot of fiber between your fingers and terrible itching problem. I think there's also a little bit of asphalt in it because as I laminate you'll see it turn black. But the bulkhead in the rear is the critical dimension. I've spaced the front off of it as well. But to get these two bulkheads perpendicular, matter of uh, getting the measurement off the bottom. And then, of course, the floor is arrived, like I said, from the AutoCAD program. So I know what the distance is I need. Going to temporarily fasten them with screws. 
they go right through the foam, hold it together. The screws will come out, of course. And then I just bonded those joints together with that expanding home insulation foam. Once it's all cured, four or five hours later, you can go back and trim it. Just a serrated bread knife is one of the best tools to use with cutting foam. Trimming a square, and then I'm also going to sand a little radius on that back bend. And all these edges have a little bit of frayed paper. Going to sand all those clean. And even more importantly, I come down and where that foam is expanded out onto the fiberglass layers before I need to sand it all off so that we don't have any of that foam between our fiberglass layers. Now up again, I'm going to be jumping back and forth, but up on the front bulkhead, there are going to be some cutouts where we want thicker fiberglass, but we want no foam between it. And this is a, one of the mounting points for the front subframe. And so I'm going to cut those out at about a 45, 30, 45 degree angle somewhere in there, just a someplace that that cutout will not be a square drop off. If I got a little bit of a bevel going into the, these cutouts, these areas, then the fiberglass will transition a lot easier and wrap around those edges. So make the cuts, just gouge all that foam out of the place. I have to be careful though, that I don't want to cut away the craft paper on the backside of that foam layer. At least not yet. Once it's fiberglass on the bottom side, enough to give a strength that we can flip the whole thing over, we will cut that paper away so that we get fiberglass to fiberglass bond going through those areas. Now here it looks like we're still cutting from the same scene, but I've actually jumped ahead in our video editing and you'll see that these pieces have been added on. And this is making up the foot well, basically. One of those mounting points for that subframe will be right below the foot well. And then of course, again, sanding all the surfaces smooth so that you don't have any little things sticking up that's gonna make a bulge in the fiberglass on this foundational layer. Like I said, jumping around, we're back to the rear bulkhead again. And there's the little quarter windows in the back extend pretty far back those tips. And in fact, they go past that rear bulkhead so I'm just going to take some uh, foam core board and make a little cover that goes around those pieces. So trying some templates here, cutting out the foam to match my templates, because you'll see behind me, the left one's finished. So I'm using the same templates to come over and create the right. And of course, now I have to cut the bulkhead to match the templates rather than the templates to match the bulkhead. And you're missing me standing up and spending time cutting the templates into the foam core. But here it is. Trial fit of the template. Looks like I'm good. Stand up, cut the foam core. And there, the magic of video editing is done already. Trial fit. And you also miss me uh, gluing them in place. But there it is. Trimming the foam away again. Kind of the same process. Glue it in the foam, trim the foam away so it's nice and clean. And of course, always sanding it to get rid of any little jagged pieces that pop up. Any little tiny thing that's sticking up, of course, is going to make a bulge where the fiberglass will not bond. It'll just leave a little air pocket underneath it. So sand everything down. And of course, missing out of this video is me vacuuming it out to clean it. So now that all those edges are cut, sanded, it's time to start laminating this thing. I'm just putting a foundational layer over this whole foam setup. That foundational layer is just going to give me a real nice, hard, clean surface to build our structural layers upon. But even though this is just this foundational layer on this joint, this is the dashboard where the front bulkhead hooks on bottom of the dash. So even though this is just the foundational layer to give me a smooth surface to work on, I've got four layers I'm going to put on here to bond these sheets real rigid to the tub itself. So it's a matter of uh, saturating the craft paper backing on the foam and then uh, stippling your uh, fiberglass on. Saturating the craft paper 
putting your layer of fiberglass on. You'll notice a little cutout here in the front bulkhead. That is going to be where the drive shaft comes through and attaches to that front differential. I've calculated out that that should be plenty of room, but not a lot of structure going to be right around that hole. So if we have any problems later with fit, we can certainly just cut that away. We will be trial fitting the subframes and the drivetrain before this whole thing is final laminations are done to this tub. So as a step ahead in the ideology behind this thing, the foam is all laminated on one side and then cutouts will be made where I want to thicken it up and have the fiberglass join from one side to the other. Once you get the layer of fiberglass uh, filled with enough resin, you'll still have some places where the resin has pooled underneath the fiberglass. And of course, it's a matter of coming back. You can see some little tiny white spots where there's no resin, but there'll be areas where it's a little too saturated. That's when you bring the squeegee out, run it through, reduce the weight of the whole lamination by taking out the extra epoxy. Kind of interesting that, like I said, this uh, craft paper, I believe, has a little bit of asphalt or something in it because it really turns black when it gets saturated. Now working a piece of glass into those little pockets for that subframe bottom mount. Now this is a four and a half ounce S glass that I'm using here to put this on. In fact, this four ounce is probably going to be one of the main fabrics I'm going to use in the lamination of this tub, besides the long unidirectional tapes to add stiffness in the between the subframes. But it does lay pretty good around corners. But when you get multiple corners that meet, you'll find that uh, there's no way to actually go around a a corner with uh, three surfaces meeting together. You have to jump to a, a really fine twill or a satin weave. Like I said, this is just foundational layer. More of the same here, just uh, saturating the craft paper, working the fiberglass into it, adding a little resin when we need to. Critical here is going along these edges because I have to trim them out because I can't do it all and wrap around the edges because I still got on most of those edges. Of course, in the center there, the tunnel, that'll be one of the last things we add because we have to have a drivetrain installed because we want to reduce the amount of clearance. It's going to be big enough as it is that we want to push that tunnel down as small as we can so it's not a 18 inch hump between the passenger and the driver. So that'll be one of the last things we put in. But along the doors there, we're going to be adding the door sills and the other foam thing. So not going to wrap the fiberglass here, just going to trim it to the edges. Now, pushing this fiberglass down into the pockets of these uh, subframe mounts, clipping the corners, then wrapping the cloth around. Not shown in the video as I've added, a, I did add, add a couple of uh, layers into the bottom of that against the craft paper, stiffen it up. Anyway, same thing, get enough resin, squeegee it out to uh, fill all the voids, remove any excess resin. Like I said, after we get 40 layers or so built up on some of these areas, you're going to want to make sure you have as much resin removed as you can, because that's going to add a lot of weight with that many layers. And if you have excess resin, Now, as I mentioned before, this is the corner that kind of sparked my discussion of wrapping around a corner.
put some resin on the surface, push that glass down tight. And this makes for a really good tight wrap around the bends. When you have uh, three or four inches of fiberglass to go up against the surface, creates a lot of bond, molecular bond to hold that fiberglass tight around the corner. And you'll see here, I've got a little bit of cloth, you know, half three quarters of an inch that needs to wrap around one corner, but it would pop up because there's not enough adhesion or cohesion to hold in place. But push in place just for a fraction of a second, get the next piece of fiberglass wrapped around it. We'll hold it in place because there's plenty of uh, lap on that piece to get that cohesive hold, so to say. And this is the corner that says there's just not going to be any, but this is the bottom subframe mount. And here is the upper as this thing's upside down. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by sliding the subframe in here. Just about a half inch of the subframe will hold, go below the floor. Now, of course, jumping to the back subframe, I have it laminated in place. The only thing yet I have not done is laminated these window little covers, but there'll be a trick of coming in here now, trimming out the foam and laminating from the inside. And just in from the water jet cutter, all these parts that contributes to be at least most of the parts for the control arms and the wheel hubs. So we'll be doing a lot of TIG welding in the next few weeks and hopefully producing a video about each one of those components. All right, so there you are with a little bit of an update on what's been going on, but of course a little foreshadowing too of what is to come. And hopefully as long as I can get some argon, if we run out of that and the world doesn't collapse before now and the completion of some welding, we have plenty to do here in the shop, plenty of supplies to keep us going. And I guess hopefully that maybe my entertainment of uh, going along in this project will be something that people with nothing better to do can just sit back and enjoy the videos. So I hope these uh, videos bring a little entertainment into your lives and make sure you go down and leave some comments. Maybe this social distancing doesn't have to distance us, at least here in the social media world, but we can have some good contact, bring a little joy to each other's lives by some lively discussion about these topics that we love in fabrication, engineering, these kind of things. So like I said, go down, leave a comment, make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. And thanks for watching.